Hey guys, just a quick slash long video uh, that I've been meaning to make for a while, but just not been in the correct headspace to do it. Uh, basically, it's just a long overdue explanation as to why I was away uh, for a long period of time. Uh, I think it was about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. I was away and didn't stream for a long, quite a lot of it. And I did the old trick of, yeah, I'm okay, I'm fine, you know, I'm just taking a break and that kind of stuff. And then I was eventually honest with it, but I just thought I'd give you an explanation. It's quite a lengthy explanation. I've got a script right here that I'm going to read off, uh, and we'll take it from there. I don't know if it's going to make much sense. It's just blurb from my head, uh, maybe not in exact timeline, uh, but it's just how I had to get it down on paper. So just bear with me and I'll try and detail as much as I can. Uh, as to what happened uh, on them two weeks. I just feel it's important to be uh, honest as I can with regards my channel and regards mental health because I think it can be uh, misconstrued that people on YouTube are perfectly fine and they don't have any kind of mental health issues and my channel's about raising awareness so if I didn't tell you about my own mental health then how can I then expect people to be honest and open with their own mental health so here we go guys just some pitch in the background of uh, mine and Helen's adventures uh, it will go to a, a section where I'll talk about at the end maybe if I've got a bit of time but I'll just uh, start now uh, I'm sure you lot you, you lot noticed that I'd vanished off YouTube for a week possibly do I can't remember uh, I feel it's important to explain what happened this channel is about being asked about an open regards mental health so we can work together to help break the stigma excuse me, I got itch on my eye uh, and to raise awareness super hypocritical of me uh, to expect you guys to be honest with your mental health and me hide mine just want to put a trigger warning in here straight away uh, what I'm about to say uh, to some people, particularly those who care about me might find difficult to hear uh, and might not to what, want to watch any further also those who are in a vulnerable place uh, mentally might want to start watching now first I'll summarize my difficulties uh, that I have uh, basically I was diagnosed with an anxiety disorder about I think 10 years ago something like that maybe a bit uh, earlier uh, and it was the most the closest thing the psychiatrist could uh, diagnose me as uh, it's a social anxiety disorder but he said I'm not a classic social anxiety uh, sufferer in that I can do things that other social anxiety or classic social anxiety uh, sufferers uh, can do. So he had to put me in social anxiety because that's where I closely fit, but I've not got classic social anxiety, so I'm more generalised slash social anxiety disorder. And I've had it since I was 10, excuse me, uh, and it's wreaked havoc on my life ever since. It's just destroyed my life uh, and I still struggle with it now and I, I still struggle with it today and it's really hard uh, and it's it in particular makes me feel uh, really fearful of work and performance which is why I've always struggled to uh, get a job and things like that because the, the expectation on me is then perform and stuff like that yeah so it's been really hard I just uh, panic quite a lot and you, you'll notice when I play Fortnite online uh, Battle Royale I'll only play with other people if there's other people there I, I won't play it on my own uh, and that's because I don't like the performance of ha having to perform in front of other people in a game that's competitive like that so yeah you'll notice it probably in my gaming I'll, if I'm going to play online with people I will play uh, on with people and not on my own usually uh, I've tried many different therapies try and combat disorder many medications to no avail uh, some of that has basically been in and out of education and the odd job here and there and to cut a long story short I've been unemployed for a number of years and I volunteered a lot of time hoping for uh, to get away around it so I volunteer a lot a lot a lot <laughs> I'm getting sick of uh, volunteering at the minute but it's what I have to do to try and beat whatever I've got uh, this social anxiety uh, at this point is where my life shifted uh, after spending a lot of time unemployed and not really you know participating in society I got tired of the monotony and of the essentially doing nothing at all all day apart from volunteering so I came up with the idea to start up a counselling organisation uh, for young people I'm a fully trained person centred counsellor uh, 
ironically, I can uh, help other people with their problems, but struggle with my own. Uh, I think a lot of people can identify with that. Uh, yeah, uh, so I came up with the idea for the counselling charity. It would be counselling young people, uh, 16, 25 for free. And I was assigned a support worker uh, to help me set this up. And he's been helping me develop the service ever since. Uh, and yeah, and to my surprise, my mental health improved a great deal when I started this up. And my, I just went from being like kind of that to then going like that. And I was having so much fun with it. It was amazing. I was learning a lot and it was just so, so good and so... Uh, beneficial to me and my clients and it was an amazing time it really was uh, and I was finally moving forward and I felt like I was finally getting somewhere and then it all started to go uh, downhill a little bit this all started on the 4th of the 7th 2017 so that's when I started up my council organization and worked a full year and it was going really good and then it started to go a bit downhill after about the year mark I was, it continued, I was feeling great, a bit, a bit of a blip every now and again, but generally just doing that, my mental health was pretty pretty sound all the way through, uh, uh, and it seemed to be really, really, really good for me, and I was doing good, uh, and it was going great, the guy who helped me, so at ABC started to talk about possible funding for the service, and how to turn it into a viable service within itself, uh, and I use the word charity because it's what everyone can understand. It's not exactly a charity, it's called a social enterprise. But no one knows what social enterprise means. So for the purpose of this, I'll just say charity. And as soon as they said, well, let's turn it into something, niggling doubts started to creep in. The old anxious thoughts started to come back in, you know. And I started to question how I'm going to get through this idea and what am I going to do with it. And all the pressure and responsibility is then on me. Uh, and it's just started to niggle away a little bit. Uh, now I've got to clarify, this. Is, it's a bit complicated what happened. Uh, so I've got to clarify some things before I tell you what actually happened. So I'm on a benefit called ESA in England and you may not know what that is. It basically means I've been deemed too sick to work because of my mental health. Because uh, every time I get a job my brain shuts me down, it just panics and just shuts me down completely. and. I just can't physically get out of the house to do the job uh, and that means uh, the anxiety overtakes me and I, I can't physically do it uh, I've done it once before but under special circumstances so I can work but under special circumstances so it's really really tricky to explain but I'll just leave it there for now so I'm, I'm on this ESA and I've been left alone for years and years uh, I think I'm in the support group of if you're over five years then you get left alone for quite a while so I've been doing that uh, yeah and here's where the problem starts uh, to move the organization forward uh, I would have to tell the job center what I was doing and I should have technically done this uh, right at the beginning I didn't know because the job center has not been in contact with me uh, so I didn't know you had to do that but it led to huge anxiety because I was scared that if I talked to the job centre then they reassess me and put me back on a different benefit where I'd have to deal with them again and then uh, I would uh, lose quite a bit of money it's like nearly £50 a week uh, so I'd lose that money and that's why I was looking to talk to them because the job centres in England aren't the best place for people with mental health and a lot of people uh, would, would support that which means I couldn't uh, really look, uh, carry on with my charity. Uh, it, it was looking like I'd have to shut it down because I wouldn't be able to continue on if the job centre reviewed me because I'd just lose too much money. Uh, that combined with the fact that it was going to be really hard to make a salary from the, the charity, uh, even to match what I was uh, getting now would be really hard. Uh, and if I turn it into a, an actual legal entity, uh, which I couldn't do because the job centre, it just made me crack and break. So I had the possibility of never getting any money for it and the pressure of the job centre and it just made me break. And I got it got too much to handle. And yeah, I just really got not in a good place. So I went on a brilliant day on a Friday. I think it was the 26th around that time of June. I had a brilliant day on a Friday. I was a, a really amazing, I had an amazing day. And then for some reason, uh, I just went, whoom straight off a cliff uh, I managed to keep getting out 
but it was evident that I, evident that I was really struggling. Uh, I think on the Saturday after the major depressive episode hit, uh, I went to a local coffee shop and uh, one of the people I know there. I was just sat there chilling, I think reading a book or listening to some music and she came over and went, are you okay? I was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> totally lying, you know, and she said, you just look really, really sad. You really look sad, just just really sad. I was like, yeah, I'm just uh, a little bit going on right now. She's like, oh, okay. So even she noticed uh, from the coffee shop that something was amiss. Uh, then one of the really low points happened. It was on the Monday just after the coffee shop incident. I was doing a stream. Uh, it's hard to talk about by the way it's uh, bringing a bit of it back so I'm just gonna kind of go slowly and we'll see where it goes yeah it's kind of like staring up some stuff so I'm gonna have to take a drink right now and just trying to uh, wet the old whistle uh, yeah once the stream finished uh, I, think, I think I had a decent stream I don't think many people noticed but once it finished I sat down tried to chill uh, and then all of a sudden huge massive waves of anxiety just washed over me man just just like hit me like a hammer uh, and depressive thoughts took over and remember, like I say my mental health just like just dropped like like that uh, huge huge uh, drop in mental health uh, it was brought on by a meeting I had with the guy who was helping me set up and the meeting hadn't happened yet but it was on the Monday in a week's time uh, and the meeting will be the one that determined if the charity that I'd set up would be uh, running or not whether it keep on going like this thing that had been keeping me going up was on the verge of collapsing straight away and collapsing uh, quite spectacularly like there's nothing I could have done about it if it did uh, but I just thought why am I working so hard on these things and no one's really supporting me excuse me uh, my mind went crazy and I couldn't not control the thoughts that were washing over and over again in my head it was so overwhelming and often were I can't remember exactly what I was thinking uh, yeah it was just like waves and waves of anxiety like and I can't remember exactly what I was thinking at the time but it was just like like a, a rush in my head and then it just like die down rush again rush again it was just like pushing me to the blink it really was uh, and the ways I to continue to wash over me I can only describe it like a huge feeling of dread like within me like something really bad was going to happen uh, and it was that kind of even now I'm like you can see my hands like tensing up I can feel it in, like not as bad but I can feel the what it was like because it was just like you know I can't verbalize it but I can like in my hands you can see it just like coming through right now a little bit it's that feeling the dread uh, that happened and I couldn't get rid of it and it was like just wave after wave of that coming through so at that point I was alive why I couldn't sit still the waves of anxiety made me pull pull up my skin so when a wave hit I'd like grab my arm like that can you see like digging in and just like dig my nails in just to try and vent some of the feeling that was coming off. I didn't want to uh, like tear the skin or anything or hurt myself in any way. I just couldn't deal with the overriding sense of fear and dread that was washing through me. Uh, it, I just couldn't get rid of it. Like I, I needed, like I was a live wire. I needed to try and vent it somehow. I couldn't go for a run uh, or anything like that. It was just uh, I was stuck in my flat, you know. So yeah, that's a. Uh, to try and get rid of the, uh, the feelings I would do stuff like that or tense my arms or like kind of with my hands and stuff like that or I'd do that with my face you know rub my face and yeah it was it's tough uh, this is when I felt my lowest uh, and this is where the trigger warning is so if you are watching this uh, you might and you don't want to hear what I'm about to say uh, then you can cut off right now I won't be offended uh, but it does get a bit darker I'll just warn you now it does get dark uh, so turn off now if you don't want to hear it but uh, it's 3am Tuesday morning uh, so after the Monday after the stream 3am couldn't, couldn't sleep was awake all night uh, and yeah I just couldn't get to sleep my head was just racing absolutely racing uh, could not switch it off meditation 
relaxation, nothing worked. It was just like ooh, 100 miles an hour. Uh, it's so, so bad. Uh, I had to be up at 9 a.m. because I was counseling that day. <laughs> uh, and it got to the point where I just wanted the pain and anxiety to end and I didn't know where else to turn or what else to do. I just didn't want to be here anymore. I'm going to be honest with that. I just didn't want that this pain uh, to continue. It was just like waves and waves of anxiety and it was literally eating me alive and wouldn't stop and usually it stops and this wouldn't stop this time and sadly enough I did google the quickest ways to commit suicide uh, that's how low I got and that's how uh, scary it got uh, and I was generally considering this option uh, at that point I was anyway uh, the method is a shotgun to the head by the way if you're wondering uh, but that can lead to a person becoming a vegetable so it's not 100% certain that you will die uh, and as soon as I saw that vegetable statement I was like yes. the light bulb went on in my head I was like oh my god what are you doing uh, and I kind of woke up from that and yeah I, my thoughts just readjusted and they're like what the fuck are you doing man that is just insane you thinking what are you thinking about that for and I ended up just googling Samaritan's number uh, Samaritan's is an English charity I don't know if it's around the world but you can ring them and just talk about your problems and talk about what's going on in complete confidence just in case I needed it uh, I ended up just passing out from exhaustion at the end of the day and uh, yeah just passed out at about 4am uh, and then woke up next day didn't have any I think both my clients cancelled luckily so I was pretty lucky in that that regard that night I'd been texting my friend Helen over the weekend but she was away uh, which was just ironic the one time you need help and the person who would help me the most is away <laughs> but uh, she came around that night because she was rude about me uh, and then she left that night on the Wednesday she, she said she was rude about me so she came Tuesday and she came the Wednesday both saying she was rude about me and she told me I can go and stay with her where she works for a few days she, she lives with her employees at the minute and they're just awesome people really awesome people offered me to go there for the night I couldn't go because I was busy the next day with something uh, but on the Thursday I broke down again and called Helen and she took me to hers for a few days so Helen just literally just pulled me out my flat and just took me to away from my situation for a few days at this point my mental health continued to deteriorate over the next few weeks I couldn't it's that I, this never happens to me and I'm going to mention that in a minute but I couldn't stop crying I, just tears just came out of nowhere the Thursday night I was woken up about 2am and then just broke again don't know why I never cry but the anxiety and pain that was going on at the time was just overwhelming it just consumed me it really did consume me uh, and I just I just had to get it out I think and that's how I did it and the first time I broke I just was trying to re resist it and just fight the tears you know and just really just try and stop it but it didn't work so I think the tears were because I kept trying to get out of the situation that I'm in with mental health like volunteering I keep pushing myself forward and every time my anxiety kicks me back down and that's what the thought process was and that's what led me to the uh, googling suicide was that what's the point in training anymore when 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 you uh, actually push yourself forward and your anxiety kicks you back down what's the point continuing on and I couldn't get myself out of that thought process that night and that's why I googled the suicide thing I regret it now completely but it's where I was at the time and I'm not gonna hide away from that uh, and I'm glad I didn't do it <laughs> obviously uh, but here we are uh, yeah so it's just like I keep trying and every time it defeats me and I never get out of my situation and I think that's what it was it was just uh, every time I try and move it, it just pushes me back down so now we get to I stayed at Helen's Thursday Friday and Saturday I went to my dad's and stayed there for a few nights and most of it was okay apart from the waves of anxiety again were just flooding over me and flooding over me again managed to keep him at bay uh, uh, and that was until the Monday hit and this was the Monday where I was seeing the guy who uh, was gonna uh, tell me if my counseling organization was uh, continuing on uh, 
and this happened to be the worst few days of the whole week actually <laughs> I just couldn't control my emotions on that day I woke up at 8 a.m. and literally by 9 a.m. Uh, that they, they were just too strong I ended up on the floor of my father's toilet <laughs> sadly enough just cried I just broke down just sat next to the door and I was just like crying for an hour then he just came and knocked on the door he's like you're alright I was like no I was just in tears and uh, yeah he eventually got to me and he got me to open the door and he just threw his arm around me and just kept telling him I can't do this anymore it's just too hard uh, just too hard pushing forward and it was just like really bad really really bad time uh, it's just hard to carry on fighting the mental health you know you're really positive fighting and you're really getting forward and moving forward then like literally smacks you back down and it was just it's just really really awful time really awful time and uh, yeah it just I just broke I was really broke he got me out of the toilet and sat me downstairs and he just sat and listened to me which was you know great yeah uh, just, just sat and just let me let me process what was going on for myself and it was just like it was just really really bad I can't explain I can't actually explain how bad it was but I just couldn't stop and that's what the scary thing was it was just like over and over and over again it was just like Rah. yeah uh, I actually went swimming that day just trying to take my minds off things but it didn't really work and uh, when I got back he ran me to the meeting with the guy uh, the, what brought on this whole collapse of my mental health which was going so great uh, so I got to the meeting and the guy who I was seeing was there meant he's a worked with mental health for a number of years so he's used to seeing these type of things so I got there and had a tiny breakdown it wasn't as big as I thought it would be uh, and the irony is that the news that he had was okay news and he, he spoke to the job centre and uh, they won't shut me down I just had to declare what was happening for me so I had to go to them and declare uh, what was going on uh, yeah, so they won't shut me down. They 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 then said it as long as he's doing something positive and it's helping him, then you know, we'll try and support him in that. And he also talked to people who could possibly get me money. They're called commissioners, and that's a possibility in the future. And you know, that's what I wanted to hear. But <laughs> unfortunately, I didn't because my head was in like this place of like complete negativity. I could not see any kind of positive, and then it just. Uh, didn't calm me down at all, it had the opposite effect and helped heaped even more pressure onto my already unpredictable head. My mind started uh, predicting what was going to happen, so it jumped from being sad about my mental health kicking me down and stopping me to then trying to predict everything that bad that might happen in the future. Like my organisation suddenly became real, and you know, the pressure of running a real charity and you know, real. Uh, you know with real prospects and re it could lead me anywhere you know uh, it just suddenly hit me like a hammer you know it just it unlocked a lot of my work anxiety questions like what if they give me money and I fail I don't know how to run a business and I have no experience running organizations so many thoughts have flooded my head once again and I crumbled again and broke down I just couldn't cope with the thoughts and the waves of fear and anxiety that were happening once more uh, so I stayed at my dad's that night stayed at home Tuesday I think and then the Wednesday Helen uh, popped up again I just said can I come to yours she's like yeah uh, yeah so I stayed with Helen for a number of days and then my dad for an another number of days I think so I'm just trying to get it straight in my head it's it's wrong on my piece of paper here so I saw the guy on Monday uh yeah, stayed with Helen for a few days, then my dad for a few days, and then literally after I got back from my dad, I stayed at mine one day, and yeah, it got to the point where I had to call the doctors. So, couldn't get to sleep on the night. Uh, again, just like thoughts racing over my head, and yeah, I just couldn't shut them up. Uh, so I went to the doctors, got an appointment virtually straight away, and he saw me for three minutes and gave me some pills to calm me down <laughs> that's, all, that's all they did uh, they worked for a day or two sorry one day but the next night that will be a Tuesday night 
it started again just racing thoughts like overwhelming waves of anxiety where I was grabbing my arms and trying to flush it all out but just wasn't helping so uh, I called the doctors again just to talk to them about the medication about when I can take it when I can't take it and she heard me on the phone and just called me in straight away and just this one she actually sit, sat down and talked to me uh, she actually perfect prescribed me another drug called ven venlaxifene uh, I just broke down in doctor's office again just saying the same old thoughts of everything's going wrong and everything's not working you know I discussed the uh, googling the suicide and she obviously ran through the protocol of safeguarding me at that point I was well, quite past that but uh, she had to be sure and then you know I prescribed me these and said come back in two weeks so once I left I popped another pill uh, it's called Propanadol uh, it's designed to calm me down uh, and then yeah from that point after about two hours after visiting the doctors I began to stabilize I cancelled all my clients the Wednesday Thursday uh, I began to stabilize a little bit the the overwhelming waves and waves and waves of anxiety they began to stop a little bit because the pills started to kick in uh, the main problem that I had with the episode was the waves of fear and anxiety that were overwhelming me you know the, it was that that was the problem I've never had it that bad the last time I had it that bad was when I was a kid and I didn't know how to stop it and I couldn't stop it but once they subsided I managed to calm myself enough to work on my own thoughts and bring them back under control because the, the anxiety was making it worse I was fearing getting fearful uh, because of that fact uh, it, I, can't, I can't explain it properly where it would be uh, make sense to people other than it was just this wave of like energy that I could not get rid of uh, the pills that calm me were up Panadol and by the way I'd advise anyone with anxiety who has anxiety attacks to try these pills because they're non-addictive and all they do is they calm the physical effects of anxiety they don't like change your brain chemistry they're just designed to bring your heart rate down uh, and just like I think it, they're pres prescribed for t uh, tachycardia to try and slow the heart rate down and just generally relax you a little bit you don't you don't feel like you're gonna pass out you don't feel like you're gonna you know sleep you just relax a little bit more excuse me yeah they're really cool and then the venlaxifene started kicking in the thing yeah I struggle to verbalize what's going on for me as you can tell like I can't actually verbalize what is going on with the, the fear and the anxiety uh, I'm not sure how this has come across so you guys, you guys are gonna have to let me know but I don't know how, how I've made it clear how bad I actually was uh, so what I did I asked my friend Helen who helped me out a great deal she's amazing she told me last night that the bed that she got me to stay on which I've not been on for two weeks she's gonna take down she left it up just in case I needed it and her, her employers went if he, if he needs to come back just let him come back and I can't thank them enough they were just amazing uh, yeah so I asked Helen to write down a few sentences of what I looked like and what she felt I, I was in that period of time. I think she's done a really good job of uh, doing that because she was just like so worried about me and she'd never seen me look so, so I'm gonna use the word frail because I just could not compute what was going on. Uh, I'm gonna add this right now. You're seeing images of what's called Conway Castle and she took me here just to break the monotony like on a Monday after I'd stayed at hers so she came and picked me up and we drove to uh, virtually two hours down the motorway to this castle called Conway Castle and look how beautiful it is like you can see it in the background I mean look at the you know the, the ramparts and the, the parts of the castle and this lovely sculpture I could not appreciate this my mind was spaced out completely you know that, that, that was beautiful I remember it being beautiful but at the time I was like waves of little anxiety kept washing over me my, my propranadol wasn't working properly and it was just waving over me and over me look at that view and I can appreciate it's like it's pretty but wave of anxiety wave of anxiety 
and I, I'm just gutted that I could not appreciate where I was. I mean, look at it, it's absolutely stunning, and that's just like, my mind was just constantly like, calm down, calm down, calm down, and just could not control it at all, and that's how, it, how bad it affected me. If I was like how I was two months ago, I'd have been buzzing here because it's just so beautiful, so stunning. It was amazing. Uh, and that's back to a different area that I went to a few months ago. Yeah, so that's how bad I was. I could not like physically, mentally be in a beautiful place and you know appreciate that. I was just trying to control the anxiety at the time and stop it happening. So on to what Helen said. She's just done, a, I think, a really amazing job in about four sentences. So uh, this is how she experienced me throughout the time of staying with her. But I do remember you looking pale, energy draining, draining from your body as each tear fell. Your eyes became empty, void of passion, drive and understanding. Your face looked sad and tired. I remember you weeping for your inner child. Remember you looking lost and frightened as if you were look you were you were your ten year old self. But I also remember you refinding some resolve and strength to accept that it's okay to ask for help. I think that really sums up what I was I was void of passion, drive and understanding because I couldn't appreciate that castle. I just yeah, the face looked sad and tired, I was just knackered all the time, I just could not I was just all cried out, essentially. I was just yeah. I eventually got to a point where I was just tired, so so tired. Uh, so she summed it up really, really well. Uh, yeah, it's just I, I never thought I'd get in a place like that again, but it happened, and she saw all of it, and she was really amazing. Uh, but yeah, looking pale, energy draining from your body, you know, that's exactly how I felt. Just everything was just sapping out of me and I couldn't stop it so yeah that's that's what happened guys it was just a really really bad time and that's why I wasn't streaming uh, so where am I now well I'm over the worst thank god because <laughs> I am knackered I'm really tired uh, I think you can get a, a condition called adrenaline fatigue it's where your body has that much adrenaline pumping through your system that you just get tired after and you can't process anymore it can last from anywhere to a week to six months and i think i might have a bit of that i'm not sure i've never been diagnosed but i'm just really thought lethargic at the minute i think that has something to do with the venlaxifene as well but i'm quite uh, drained at the minute uh yeah so i find myself in sort of a lost place i'm not sure what to do or where to go because every time I try to bet myself, my anxiety seems to like to swap me down. I uh, also realised how I've isolated myself a lot from people in the community. I never really realised I did this. Uh, but when the anxiety attack hit, I had no one to call. I'm sure if I would have called some people, they may have got involved. But I've not, I'd not seen some best friends for a few months. Because life gets in the way. And the only friend that I see regularly is Helen. Uh, and I've noticed how ele electronic communication was filling a hole in my life that maybe real people could have done. And I mean real people is like physically being there. So I just like really realised how isolated I've made myself. Uh, and it's just all total accidental because my charity took over and then mental health gaming came along. And I've just been doing that and I've met some amazing people and that's where I've been getting my... Uh, communication from um, and my interactions from but although you guys are great you're not sat here with me <laughs> you know so I think I need to add something like that in my life uh, yeah but I'm still here and I'm determined to keep fighting as long as you get to try and get where I need to be in life and I plan to start the fight by going out and meeting new people which my introvert side is screaming no don't do uh, but I'm not going to rush myself, I'm going to uh, just take a few weeks, maybe another week or two just to just uh, get through and not stress myself too much, just counsel and then stream maybe and then just see where I go after that. 
Uh, just want to say for all you guys who are struggling, keep fighting because although it was the worst anxiety attack that I have had for how old am I now? It's 24 years. 24 years. Uh, you can get through it. I know the dark times can feel incredibly dark when you're in there. They can feel like you're never going to get out of it. But if there is even a hint of light, grab it with both hands. And if you've got a friend that you can turn to, do it because they can save you and they can really help you out. Uh, I, I would really advise to find one person you can talk to about your problems. Uh, yeah, they can be invaluable. And you can find your way back into some happiness, I can guarantee it, because my mental health has gone from like the bottom, and then it was on, I'd say I'm just level now, and just not too bad. I still have down times like today was a hard day for some reason. I still have like issues with my appearance and my flat where I live is not the best place in the world. I want to move. I hate it here. But I've got a roof, you know. Uh, as long as the people around me stay quiet, I can cope with that up until I can get out of here. Uh, so I've got issues with my appearance, my flat, and trying to meet a significant other whilst living in this flat and being unemployed is not going to happen. So that depresses me quite a lot. But hopefully if i keep moving forward with abc i just want to say in the background this is the castle that i went to uh keep more moving forward with abc my charity and, and mental health gaming you never know what's in the future and i hope it will take me new places and you know i hope my ch channel continues to grow and people appreciate what i'm trying to do and appreciate this video uh, of me just being honest with my own mental health apologies it's so long guys i really do I apologize for it being so long but I had to get everything into one video and into one uh, concise video where you hopefully can understand it I've made some mistakes through this video I might re-record it I might not I'm not sure yet so yeah guys I'll leave the video here I hope it explains what happened uh, because I really feel a need to be honest with you guys as to my own mental health and I do struggle from time to time so I don't want to sit there thinking that I've got all the answers I don't want to sit there thinking that I'm, I'm okay all the time and I've beaten my demons because I'm not uh, but together I think we can raise awareness and break the stigma surrounding mental health because I think it needs to happen and we need to work together on that so yeah so wish you all the best guys and stay strong my fellow mentals we can do it together. Peace out. Catch you later.